welcome to Sunny Hills Art Studio. My name is Elizabeth Jimenezbury, and I'm an artist. I work with many medias, and I was born here in Illinois. And my husband, Jose, is from Oaxaca, Mexico. I am a mom of two boys, Elliot and Jose Andres, and we are a bilingual family. I have about 22 or more years experience teaching art. I have two master's degrees and I'm a national board certified teacher. I work with every child from kindergarten to fifth grade here at Sunny Hill. Each class comes to art once a week for 50 minutes, which is awesome. I'm very fortunate that I get to know and love every single one of our Sunny Hill Tigers, and I get to watch them grow from adorable little baby kindergartners to distinguished, fine young ladies and gentlemen as they go off to middle school and high school. The Sunny Hill Art Studio is a choice-based art classroom. And that means that rather than completing the same assignments as a class altogether, students develop their own artistic behaviors as they work on their own authentic artwork at studio stations. So they come in with ideas and then they create their own artwork. So the artistic behaviors are developing craft, engaging and persisting, envisioning, expressing, observing, reflecting, stretching and exploring, and understanding art worlds, which is sometimes called art history. The many stations in our studio include everything from drawing to clay and more. Here's a list of just some of our studio stations, drawing, painting, collage, clay, jewelry making, weaving, sewing, sculpture, printmaking, paper making, building, all kinds of things. And we have pop-up stations such as bookmaking and calligraphy and metal tooling as well. The way I teach is a little different. So I teach mini lessons to students individually or in small groups while others work independently. And I circulate the room to interact with students, talk to them, laugh with them, and guide them in their work. So my role is to facilitate the young artists' natural creative instincts and to guide them in developing their emerging skills, as well as to help them make connections with the larger world. So every child has an art day. Your child will always have art on the same day of the week. So please make sure they wear old clothes or play clothes because we do get very messy at times and we will not be wearing aprons this year. So here are the days that different classrooms come to art. So on Mondays, Avila and Schaefer come. Tuesdays, Morales Benson, Kester, Placeres, Vila Gomez, Villegas, Wednesdays, Capitas Malloy, Drecal, Mendez, and Villarreal, Thursdays, Schmidt, Mungin, Ortiz, Camosa, Garcia, and Matore, Fridays, Wessler, Peralta, Hamilton, Hudson, and Cruz and Thake. So it will be every one of those days, those classes will come to the art studio. Sometimes students will come down to art for special classes as well. These may be on different days from regularly scheduled art classes. So we have some bonus art classes. So just because they're regular art days on a Monday, they might, that doesn't mean they might not come on a Tuesday. They could. So this is because this year we have one art teacher in each elementary building full time. This allows us the opportunity to collaborate and integrate across curricular areas. For example, Mr. Avila's class came down on the first day of school to work on a rock painting project. 
they were painting a symbolic rock for the beginning of the year. Mr. Avila and I were able to team teach the lesson and students were able to see us modeling collaboration and teamwork and that allows us to achieve greater student engagement and social emotional well-being. Mrs. Malloy's class might come down to the art studio to create carved animals while they are reading the book The Tiger Rising and in this book these students are reading about a boy who is an artist who carves wood animals. So those students will be able to really get deeper into the story and have empathy for that character in the story because they will be doing something the way that the, that character does it. Another example might be uh, second graders writing poetry and coming down and writing their poems in calligraphy and maybe illustrating a watercolor painting to go with it. There's tons of things we can do. At Sunny Hill, we have three main rules and those are the same for everywhere in the building. They are the three Bs. Be respectful, be safe, and be responsible. And we talk to the children about how those rules apply to every different room and every different situation very explicitly. So we really make the expectations clear so that students can be successful. For example, we do not run in the art room because the floor might be wet and we could slip, but we do run in the gym or we run out at recess. So we just talk about when different things are acceptable and we make those expectations very clear so that children can be successful. I also want to talk about safety, especially this year. We are being very careful because we care about your families and we care about your children and we're doing everything we can to keep everybody safe. We want to stay in school. So we do use shared materials in the art room like pencils, but this is how we're careful. We have a container, it's over there right now, with sharpened pencils, I sharpen them, and in between uses, when the kids are finished with the pencils, they put them in here, and then I clean them. We also use shared materials such as building materials, but before the children use them, they use hand sanitizer. After they use them, they use hand sanitizer. We also have sinks. We wash hands frequently. I have a lot of soap this year. We have assigned seats and the children are in groups or pods. They are in the same groups in their classrooms as they are in the art room. They're in the same groups throughout the day so that if somebody were to test positive for COVID, we would know who was nearby them. We also keep distance the children are three feet away when they're in line. They know all of this. We are training them how to keep safe so that we can stay in school. And we clean frequently. So after the kids leave, or sometimes I ask the kid, the older kids to help me, we clean surfaces to keep kids safe. Many parents ask me to suggest ways to encourage artistic development at home. Pablo Picasso said, every child is an artist. The problem is remaining an artist when you grow up. Children are instinctively creative. All they really need is time, space, a place to make their art, and some basic materials. And parental support. So most of us don't have space to set up a whole art studio in our homes, but you can have an organized little box with some materials and they can set that up at the kitchen table. They are learning to behave like artists and part of that is being able to set up a studio and being responsible for their materials and cleaning up. So they should be able to do that. They are learning that in the Sunny Hill Art Studio. So I recommend that you provide a big ream of paper. You can get just cheap old copy paper at Walmart or wherever you go, um, 
You can also get them art kits as gifts, but they can get expensive. So you can also find found objects around the house. We used to make paper mache out of cereal boxes and newspaper and just flour and water paste when I was growing up. Um, when my kids were younger, I would go to thrift stores and garage sales and I found cheap art materials all the time. We have still, as you might imagine, so many art materials in my house and a lot of them were a dollar or two from a garage sale. So here's just a little list of things you might collect in a little box so that your children can have their own little art studio in a box. Pencils, erasers, a pencil sharpener, that's important, pens, markers, crayons, tape, scissors, glue, Play-Doh or modeling clay, pipe cleaners, and there's a million more art supplies, but that would be a good start. Many parents will say things like, I'm not an artist, or I can't even draw a stick figure, and meaning to be funny and self-deprecating, but we would never say, I'm not a reader in front of our kids. And art skills are skills just like any other. The more we practice, the better we draw. So kids are always watching. They're always listening to what we're saying. So be very careful what you say about how you feel about your own art skills. If you are showing them that you're not a confident artist, they might pick up on that and think that they cannot be an artist either, which isn't true. And by the way, you can still be an artist if you want to. You can practice and you can develop your art skills. Doesn't matter how old you are. So I really recommend that you just sit down with your kids and make art with them. And, you know, put your phone away. Turn it off. Put it on silent. Put it in the other room and just really be present with your kids. You will probably make memories that you and your kids will never forget if you just sit down and start creating and have some awesome conversations. One thing you could do is you could have like a family art night, like maybe Thursdays or art night, and different uh, members of the family could pick out what you're going to do that night. And there's just tons of different ideas on the internet if you aren't sure where to start. One thing that my family does is when we go out to eat, we always bring, I have a little bag and in it is just a little tiny sketchbook and some old pens and markers. And we always draw while we're waiting for our food. And when you're drawing, you're not looking at your phone. So it's nice that my teenage boys aren't looking at their phones, but they're drawing. And then that allows us to still have a conversation, which is great. It's nice to have a conversation with your teenage kids. I am all for keeping kids off screens as much as possible, but there are also quite a few amazing art channels on YouTube and you can tour art museums all over the world. And there's some great apps on the iPads, the school iPads that are already installed. So some YouTube channels include Draw So Cute, Art for Kids Hub, Red Ted Art. Those are all really great. There's about a million more. Of course, you need to be supervising them because you never know what you're going to get. There's also virtual museum tours. You can look on Pinterest. And then I've listed here some of the iPad apps. Sketch is School, really good. Paper, Stop Motion Studio. Again, there's so many more. When you're talking to your kids about their art, try to ask them open-ended questions like, tell me about this drawing. Can you tell me how you created this? What were you thinking when you made this? What did you learn when you created this? What are you thinking about creating next? Things like that. You might make them feel self-conscious if you say, what is that? <laughs> because they want you to be able to tell what it is, right? So think about those open-ended questions and let them just get started talking to you about their work. Now, I really love this idea. You can get a picture frame that opens easily. Now, the one in this picture opens from the front. I think that that came off of 
Amazon, but you can just get any picture frame that opens easily from the back. And then every time they put, they create a new artwork, you can put that masterpiece in the front. And that's going to show them that you really value their artwork and enough to hang it up in your home. And it also is really a, a good way to store a lot of artwork on the wall. Sometimes they make a lot of artwork and you don't know what to do with it. So this is one solution. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to my presentation about our fine arts program. And don't forget, I am available for conferences when they come around. Just sign up for a slot with me. And of course, you can always email me. My email is eburry, E-B-U-R-E, at barrington220.org. Lastly, I am looking forward to our annual art show night. I'm hoping it can happen this year. And each student will have an artwork displayed along with an artist statement they've written. This typically happens along with spring conferences. You will not want to miss it. I anticipate a wonderful year of learning with your amazing children. And thank you for all you do as parents because you are your children's first and most important teachers. Thank you for supporting our mission here at Sunny Hill. We try to make sure that every child can develop their full potential. Thank you.